Today on Refined, we road trip to one of Washington's most beautiful places. I want to see a whale. I want to see an orca. <laughs> Find out how you could win a new Honda for your next Northwest adventure. Then, oh, hello. The secret behind the mystery pop-up picnic that will have hundreds dressed up in white with no clue where they're going. And we discover a museum that will really ring your bell. Hello? Seattle Refine starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Seattle Refine. I'm Guard Swanson. You know, one of the best things about summer in Seattle is how many cool destinations there are just a car ride away from the city. This summer, our sponsor, your Western Washington Honda dealers, is helping us discover the best of Western Washington as part of its one tank trip sweepstakes. Today's one tank adventure takes us to San Juan Island. Snug Harbor is located on peaceful Mitchell Bay on the west side of San Juan Island. So we jumped into a brand new Honda Accord and caught the ferry from Anacortes to Friday Harbor. The Accord is stylish and functional featuring a remote start, 8-inch display audio touchscreen, and Apple CarPlay integration. And the gas mileage, 38 miles per gallon on the highway, make this the ideal car for a road trip. After exiting the ferry, we decide to stop for a snack at Bakery San Juan. We only do this one day of the week, and this is a uh an organic whole wheat sourdough bread that we do. In this former metal shop, Mark Shepard and his team turn out some of the most delectable baked goods on the island. Cookies, cakes, sandwiches, pizza, and of course bread, all made fresh daily. It's been a favorite of locals and visitors alike for more than 10 years. We have really loyal customers. Um, and then they bring friends from off island, you know, so friends and family visit you know, during the summer months, which is great. We're lucky to be in a community that we're in. With snacks in hand, we're making the short drive to Snug Harbor Resort. The setting here is stunningly beautiful. All 17 cabins and three suites feature breathtaking views, making an ideal spot to spend time amongst family and friends. Yeah, we have kids, we're here with grandparents, we have three generations here. We came in a boat, so we're just kind of forced to relax and take it all in. The location on the resort, right on the water, offers access to all kinds of outdoor activities, like sea kayaking. Crystal Seas Kayaking launches its tours from the marina so you can walk out the front door of your cabin and be on the water within minutes. But one of the beautiful parts that these guys have done is just preserve the pristine, like natural wildlife of the Northwest in their resort. Um, and so it's really, really quiet here. Um, you never feel like you're just like part of the hustle and bustle. Uh, it's beautiful. This is a beautiful protected bay. It's this area is home to tons of marine life, including orca whales. And the calm inland waters make this the perfect adventure for expert and beginning kayakers alike, like this family visiting from Dubai. We want to, to explore the nature here because nature is so beautiful and so, so different of what we have there. And uh, yeah, we want to make the most of it, to try the water and the smells and the air and the grass and everything. <laughs> After working up an appetite on the water, it's time to grab some dinner. So we're hopping back in our Accord for the short drive to Duck Soup an island tradition for more than 40 years. I see people that live here seasonally. They come back every year with their families and their kids. They can come in here in flip-flops or come in in a suit and tie for their anniversary. You know, it's casual, fine dining, so you, know, you get really great experience and for not a lot. After noshing on fresh local seafood. And there we have it, Clams Vindaloo. And enjoying a refreshing cocktail, it's back to Snug Harbor. There's no better place to end the day than roasting marshmallows around the fire pit with the sun slowly dipping under the horizon. Just a gorgeous setting, just quiet, secluded, beautiful. We, we've been uh, uh, incredibly impressed with the whole, the, the facilities, the, the rooms, the services, everything. It's been a great vacation. We, you know, we're only here for about four days. We, should, we wish we had for about four or five more. 
Don't forget to enter your Western Washington Honda dealers one tank trip sweepstakes for your chance to win a three year lease on a 2018 Honda HRV or Civic, plus other weekly prizes. You can find all the details on our website. And if you're headed to the San Juans, we have found another reason to celebrate the Orcas Island Cider and Mead Festival. Now in its eighth year, the Cider and Mead Festival is back Saturday, July 28th. Now most of you are familiar with hard cider, but if you don't know what mead is, it's a drink made with fermented honey. There will also be food, live music, and more. If you go, drop us an email and tell us what you think. Here's something we didn't know until now. Gig Harbor has a gondola. That's right, you don't have to travel clear to Venice to experience the romance of an Italian gondola ride thanks to Gig Harbor Gondola. The owner, John, even wears the traditional red and white striped outfit and he rows passengers and cruises around the harbor sharing history and gossip about the town. To read his story or learn more, log on to our website. If you see a bunch of people wearing white and carrying picnic baskets tomorrow, we probably know why. Seattle's annual Dinner and Blanc takes place tomorrow. And if you don't know, Dinner and Blanc is a super chic secret pop-up picnic that happens once a year. How secret is it? Even the diners don't know where the party's located. It's a secret venue. We're on Thomas Street and I don't know where we're going. I'm still guessing they haven't told us where we're going yet. Why are all these people lingering on the Seattle sidewalk dressed in all white? They are waiting to learn the secret location to the hottest ticket in town called Les Dinés en Blanc. The <laughs> global tradition started nearly three decades ago in Paris, and it finally came to the Emerald City this summer. I couldn't wait to see what it was all about and where we were headed. Well, what's big enough to hold thousands of people, maybe the pier? We thought gas works, maybe. Or we possibly thought the waterfront, but we aren't sure. So there's the obvious choices, right? Um, like gas works, but I don't know. I have no idea. My guess is somewhere in West Seattle. After months of anticipation and waiting, the secret was finally out. The location? Myrtle Edwards Park. Well, Dine en Blanc is all about getting together and celebrating with friends over good food and good wine. And, and so we sold out the event in less than two weeks. We have over a thousand people here tonight. <laughs> You're told that you need to bring your table, your two chairs, your white linens, uh, your silverware, and they had to bring it all on a trolley. And of course, wear white. And that is like the most amazing thing is just to be able to see this crowd of people all in their unique fashions and just the uh, decorations on the table and everything is just amazing. You like this fly ensemble I'm wearing here? I'm trying to uh, channel my, my French couture going on here. So I got my, my fascinator, my faux lock, black lipstick. We have been on the waiting list forever, and it finally came to Seattle. Cheers! I'm not Fayette. This is uh, Madame de Bovary. <laughs> I was expecting much more people dressing like, uh, like us. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. You know, dinner and blog is just, it, you know, it's just incredible. This event is incredible. You know why? Because here in Seattle, it rained this morning. Now the sun's out and it's absolutely spectacular. It's great people, great food, and a great event. Be, to be honest, I have no idea, I had no idea that this many people had this many white clothes. Cheers! This is our ninth Dine en Blanc. We've been to five in Victoria, three in Vancouver, and then this is our first one, the first one in Seattle. We're excited to be here. I've been lucky enough to go to a Dine en Blanc in Paris uh, about 2000, 2001, uh, when I was living there. Uh, and Paris, obviously, it's a much bigger event, even 15 years ago. Uh, that was next to the Eiffel Tower at the Champ de Mars. Uh, but here we are in a very iconic place for Seattle. Uh, it's a beautiful evening, and everyone will definitely have a great time. Oh my God, the ambiance! I feel like I feel like I'm in a movie yes. or something. Yes. <laughs> it was a lot of work to get all of the stuff ready to get here um, and to be here. But the minute we stepped off the bus and we saw the parade of people in white crossing the bridge and walking into the park, we saw the sailboats in the background. It was a dream. It really was a dream for this couple. The secret location wasn't the only surprise that night. I made her in mind forever. We just got engaged. I wanted to make sure that she's wearing white. It felt fitting that I wanted to ask her that she's going to wear white again. So, you know what? Why not? I, I'm still speechless. 
think I've been smiling up for three hours straight. Um, just the response with over a thousand people wanting to attend the event has been amazing. And then to see people's creativity in their dress and their table decorations and just to have so many people. To learn more about Dinner and Blanc, log on to our website. And if you're going this year, shoot us an email and tell us all about it. Seattle Refine is just getting started. A gigantic announcement for fans of Pearl Jam. Wait until you hear about the new exhibit coming to town. But first, the history of the phone and so much more. Everything about the cell phone that you carry in your pocket, you can see the early ideas on display here. We'll take you to the coolest little Seattle museum you have probably never heard of next. Hello? Another Welcome back to Refined, I'm Guard Swanson. The stars of ABC's most popular drama made a splash at Safeco Field. The cast of Grey's Anatomy is in town filming this week, so they stopped by the safe last night for the M's game against the Giants. Two of the actors, including James Pickens Jr., a.k.a. Dr. Weber, even threw out the first pitch. We're told the cast from Grey's spinoff, Station 19, will also be in town this week filming. Welcome to Seattle, guys. These days, we take for granted the hundreds of TV channels we can watch or FaceTiming with loved ones. Even having a mobile phone seems passe these days. But as Refine's John Prentice discovered, a small but mighty museum in Seattle's Georgetown neighborhood hasn't forgotten how we got here. If vintage phones ring your bell, Seattle's Connections Museum is the place to be. Hello? Hello, John. Peter Amstein works here. This museum started over 30 years ago uh, by a gentleman named Herb Warwick, who was a executive at Pacific Northwest Bell. There's funktastic donut phones, super early phones, candlestick phones, a real English phone booth, the first rotary dial phone, a phone company Tonka truck, a phone book, even the world's first cordless phone, designed right here in Seattle. The restaurant at the top of the Space Needle rotates, and so they couldn't use a corded phone, and they wanted people to have a way of making telephone calls from their table in the restaurant. Only five of them were made, and we have one of those on display here in the museum. The latest and greatest of yesteryear is all here, including a shell phone. This was originally in a tiki bar on Pier 51 in Seattle called the Polynesia. And when that restaurant closed in 1981, it was rescued by one of our volunteers. And now it's one of our many obscure little treasures here at the Connections Museum. And if you've never seen the inside of an old payphone, today's your day. If you were a telephone operator from the very beginning up through the 1960s, one of the skills you had to have is being able to listen to the sounds of coins dropping into the phone and keep a running total in your head so you knew when the person had put in the correct amount of money. A nickel rings the bell once. A dime, twice. And a quarter hits this little gong. That right there is 40 cents. Please deposit another dime to continue. The Connections Museum has preserved lots of old telephones, but they also have the gear that connects them to one another, like this thing. This is an example of a manual switchboard. This is the way telephone calls were connected in Seattle from the beginning of service around 1900 right up until 1923. Number, please. I'd like extension one, please, operator. Connecting you now. Hello? Hello? From there came this, a panel switch, an electromechanical operatorless switchboard. This is the guts of rotary dial. That clicking sound you hear in the background is the machinery counting the pulses as it goes through the system step by step in order to complete your call. Hello? Peter says today all of this equipment has been replaced by computers and the Connections Museum is one of very few places you can see these fantastic gizmos in action. Much of the early history of computer science, all of the early history of telecommunications, everything that about the cell phone that you carry in your pocket, you can see the early ideas on display here. John Prentice, Seattle, Refine. The Connections Museum is open every Sunday, 10 to 3. To learn more, log on to our website.
Coming up on Refined, talk about a big breakfast. Plus, oh baby, wait until you hear the list of unusual newborn names that's so Northwest. Welcome back to the show. I'm Garth Swanson. You know, for millions of Pearl Jam fans, Eddie Vedder and the gang aren't just a band, they are a religion. And now a new exhibit is honoring them like never before. Pearl Jam Home and Away rolls into Mopop next month, and it sounds really cool. The exhibit features more than 200 rare artifacts from the band's nearly three-decade run, including instruments, set lists, original typewritten lyrics, and more. Pearl Jam Home and Away opens to the public August 11th, and we can't wait. And there's not much time left to see the most expensive piece of art ever sold by an American artist. The 1982 painting, untitled by the legendary Jean-Michel Basquiat, is on display for a few more weeks until August 13th at the Seattle Art Museum. The painting sold at auction last year for an astounding $110 million. Speaking of art, a West Coast pop-up museum has launched an exhibit to honor the most important meal of the day. Reporter Dan Rascone takes us on a tour of something called the Hall of Breakfast. Jump, jump, jump! <laughs> it's not very often you get a group of college co-eds. One, two, three. <laughs> finding so much joy in an art museum. But how many museums include bacon, eggs, and waffles? Okay. It's called the Hall of Breakfast, and it starts by entering a large refrigerator. Then it's off to 10 different rooms. The donut room. All surrounding a life-size egg. A breakfast theme, which includes food samples. We are in the breakfast confetti room. And of course, breakfast is not complete without bacon. Say that these are different slices of bacon, probably. Why a breakfast theme? We wanted to create a space that found kind of art and playfulness in something really every day. John like Connors is one of three creators of this traveling art museum, which includes the work of 25 local artists all trying to capture that one inspiring moment in the morning. There's that moment right when you wake up where you think today might be like anything is possible. The purpose of this exhibit is to bring you back to that moment where you think anything is possible. The museum just opened June 9th, but it's become a social media frenzy. Every room you go into creates a space for unique photos to post. That's why these ladies are here. <laughs> Instead of just taking pictures like in front of like a mountain or on the grass, you gotta take it on an egg and donuts and bacon and stuff like that. Social media has a lot to do with why people come here. I think there is a demand in the world for for fun things to do, for fun things to take pictures of. One of my favorite parts about this museum, free food. We've got a breakfast burrito from Even Stevens. We've got some gummy eggs maple syrup bacon cookie, and some delicious Kodiak cakes. All about food, which I love food. But breakfast doesn't last all day, and so it is with this museum. Soon it'll pack up and move out, which is also part of the concept. The idea that this sort of magical breakfast land appears for a couple months and then, and then is gone is fun to us. Maybe breakfast is the most important meal of the day. We want people leaving here believing like the world could be more artistic and more connected and a little more fun. <laughs> yes! <laughs> that was cute. You guys want another one? Seattle Refined will be right back. But first, if there's a car lover in your family, make sure you tell them about the giant car show going on in Puyallup this weekend. More than 2,500 cars from classic to hot rods will fill the Washington State Fair and Events Center in Puyallup beginning Friday for the good guys 31st Pacific Northwest Nationals. If you're a car nut, this is a show you don't want to miss. To learn more, go to goodguys.com. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Refine, I'm Guard Swanson. Now before we go, a question for you. What's in a name? If you're a diehard Northwesterner, it could say a lot about the region you love. Refine contributor Gretchen Basio has gone to town coming up with Northwest inspired baby names. River, Maple, Magnolia are just a sample of some of the creative monikers she's come up with. To see the whole list, log on to the website. All right, that's gonna do it for today's show. I'm Guard Swanson, thank you so much for joining us here on Seattle Refined. We'll see you next time.